muted. See how they can uh, move their solution to cloud uh, without any downtime. So uh, that's why that's why this replication uh, replication topics actually I select based on the Bangladesh con context, and uh, most of the time uh, uh, some some of them I actually don't really know how the replication should work and how they uh, they will. Uh, migrate their uh, database to cloud e as easy as than uh, without any downtime. So before doing that, uh, let me uh, sh share you the version. What types of version actually uh, SQL started, uh, SQL uh, support for uh, replication for their uh, publishing their database with the real time. So here is a. a, a I shared that uh, 2016, 14 SP1, and 12 SP2 and SP3. These uh, these are the database actually directly support and uh, this uh, replication feature where uh, where uh, everyone can easily migrate uh, their uh, database without any uh, downtime. So the main concept of this uh, Azure replication is uh, one kind of uh, uh, real-time synchronization as like a OneDrive or Google Drive as well. So uh, let me show you the architecture here. So how the architecture is work for uh, Azure replication. So there is a three, uh, three core component uh, basically work for this replication. So one is a publisher, another is distributor, and the last one is subscriber. So, uh, so, so these three three things uh, we have to main uh, follow uh, when we do the replication. So, what the pub publisher do? The publisher publish changes made on some tables by sending that uh, sending the updates to the distributor. The publisher can be an Azure SQL managed instance or a SQL server instance. So this uh, this publisher work work uh, from both sides so it may you, you may you may use or uh, you may use on a sql server instance on your on-prem machine and uh, you may use uh, as your sql ma uh, managed instance for your uh, application as a database service so both both um, from the both side you actually do uh, uh, do the uh, publishing your database with a real time so second one is distributor how the distributor is the, the distributor collects change in the R R articles from the publisher so let's see you you have a one table and you are using uh, you are inserting some data to your tables and uh, uh, you are deleting the data as well so uh, what it will do so the thing is uh, when you remove any information from your table then it will automatically remove from your uh, uh, your uh, another server where you are actually replicating your data so this is happen actually very uh, very real time so i will show you the demonstration how the uh, how the database is uh, replicated and the, how the table is working in the uh, without any uh, delay so so the distributor uh, distributor can be either or a SQL managed instance or a SQL uh, server instance with uh, any person as any person as long what I shared in the my uh, uh, previous slide. So uh, how the subscriber is work here. So subscriber receive changes made on the publisher. A SQL server instance and SQL managed instance can both be. Uh, push and pull subscribers uh, though a uh, uh, pull subscriber is not uh, uh, supported when the distributor is is uh, is an uh, maybe azure sql managed instance or a subscriber uh, uh, or, or or and the subscriber is not a database on azure sql so this uh, from azure is a, a database in azure sql database can only be a push subscriber so so as you, uh, Azure SQL database uh, only uh, only be a push subscriber this authority from uh, done. So so is there any question from uh, from a, a publisher distributor or a subscriber from here?
I think uh, uh, no question here. So uh, moving forward, that uh, how the scenario is work. So scenario typically a, a replication scenario is uh, a this is the transactional replication published on the Azure SQL database. On on this uh, this replication was used in the new subscription uh, wizard or uh, a transaction uh, transaction SQL statement to create a push to subscribe uh, subscription to Azure SQL database uh, and uh, three is uh, with the single and pool database in Azure uh, Azure SQL the initial data set to a snapshot that that is created by the snapshot agent and the distributor and uh, applied by the distrib distribution agent when a SQL managed instance uh, publisher uh, publi uh, instance as a publisher then uh, you can also use a database backup to see the Azure SQL database subscriber so uh, data migra in, in a data migration scenario use uh, uh, basically uh, a transitional replication to replicate data from uh, Azure SQL to uh, uh, sorry uh, data from uh, SQL server to Azure SQL database so uh, redirecting the client or a middle tier application to up to date the database copy so so uh, moving forward my next slide so what it will take it will take you have to enable the replication uh, services from your uh, uh, sql database uh, this, this feature should be enabled so 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 when you enable this feature, so you you have to go the um, Azure SQL configuration manage uh, manager. Then then uh, you have to make sure that uh, your SQL server agent is uh, automatic mode. So when you do the replication, this uh, this option should be or uh, automatic mode. And uh, when you st uh, start the replication for your database so it will uh, so that it, it can automatically start and uh, stop <clears throat> so uh, let me show you the demo so uh, so this this machine actually i already set up for this session and uh, i also have a uh, 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 database already created for in uh, Azure, uh, which is uh, Azure SQL Database DTU. This name is uh, replication. So I am I, I already I already connect this uh, database to my um, management studio here. Yeah. So uh, so I already enabled the feature for the replication feature here. So that's why it's showing me the replication feature. <coughs> Sorry replication uh, already available here so what i will do so um, i already have a replicated database here so uh, just because of showing this i am removing i am stopping this uh, publisher let me so that i can show you the whole step how the things is working <clears throat> No, worries. so we already saw. Uh, we already showed uh, the, the there is an error got, but uh, that's not a uh, problem. I'm I'm going to. I already create a database for uh, test DB. So here is a. Uh, uh, I didn't insert any table. So let me uh, just put on a table. Let's see. I am uh, using here an ID. Just keep it as it is name but, uh, and i make sure you have a uh, one primary key so without in uh, without a pri primary key this uh, you will face an error here so just keep it as it is okay I think this 
table already is available here okay so now <clears throat> now what i need to do i need i i need to go uh, to the replication and right click here because i have to con uh, con configure the distribution so i i need to enable and i have to show the database uh, or which database i would like to replicate so just clicking the next i my uh, my sql uh, server name is here and uh, i am already defining the location where i need to replicate data so basically it's the folder where, uh, where it will store so i'm going server name as a distributor no problem okay configure the distribution and just click finish so <clears throat> when i click finish it will enable the replication and uh, the the replicated folder will be shown here unmuted okay now i now i need to click the local publisher so i am what i will do i am connecting my local database to my uh, cloud database so uh, this uh, this objective is basically i don't want to face any downtime and i need my data on real time in my cloud so let's say you have a 60 or 600 GB database. So there is a huge difference between 60 and 600. So it, this will uh, this will take much time for taking backup and migrating to the server. But uh, we are not doing that. We we will do in the as earliest as possible. So <clears throat> we already enable the replica uh, replication feature to our uh, replication uh, services but uh, uh, right now i need to add uh, a new publication so what i need to do i am clicking the local publication uh, so that i can able to add my uh, database and table here so uh, right now i i am adding the uh, test db2 so uh, first uh, you, you have to remember that uh, this is the transactional uh, replication so uh, this should be a transactional replication and this this will receive the every snapshot uh, um, and update snapshot from your local database to uh, cloud database so i'm selecting the table <clears throat> clicking next in a snapshot uh, now here is a snapshot agent i need to add here is the run sql agent as it is next i am putting a name name here is db Okay. <clears throat> okay. Just clicking the refresh here. Here it's already uh, already available so uh, right now i uh, what i need to do i need to go uh, i need to go to my uh, sql database uh, azure sql database where i uh, where i need to uh, actually can uh, replicate this uh, uh, database uh, on uh, on real time so what i have to do right now I have to add a subscription here so that this will replicate. 
application. So now I need now I need to add my uh, cloud subscription, uh, cloud SQL subscription, so that uh, this uh, so that it, it will it will uh, replicate the data from uh, local to cloud. <clears throat> I'm adding my subscription here. Okay. Now I'm showing the database in next. I need to add Now click next. <clears throat> we don't need to change anything uh, right now. So we already set up everything what we need. So just click next and uh, finish and click here. Now it will automatically create the replication for, for your local database to cloud. Completed. Let's see. So see here is already uh, table is uh, uh, available from our test DB2. So what, uh, what I will do right now, <clears throat> I am inserting some information. Uh, let's see here and uh, let me check if it's available or not. So just uh, go to your Azure uh, portal and uh, check the table. So you see here is the I am already here is the replication database. So here the table is already available. So you see here is the IT and name is uh, also what I insert from my local DB. So let's see I am just putting another uh, let me phone number. Phone number. So just keep it as it is and uh, just put it on save. It's already replicated. So let me show you in here and clicking refresh. <clears throat> I need to add my password. Okay. So you see this this information is uh, coming here as uh, earliest as possible. So you, you you don't need to worry about your uh, uh, database information when you you are trying to insert uh, for your local database and uh, when when you think to actually migrate to cloud, then uh, you don't need to worry about the your your database is. A, a, very large you don't have enough time how you can do the things 
and uh, the another thing is uh, this is this uh, this information i shown you only for the one single subscription but uh, if you see my uh, see my architecture here so this this is uh, this is very much possible to use a multiple subscription as well so you can also add a multiple subscription to uh, do this replication as well so you you may you may connect your database uh, from your multiple application or uh, you can use uh, you 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 don't have enough time to you you don't want any uh, downtime as well for for your uh, connecting to your another application so what you need to do you 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 just add a different uh, subs, uh, subscriber as uh, here if you click on the new subscription option so when you click the new subscription option then you can add actually uh, a multiple subscription uh, based on your based on your need so you don't need to uh, worry about uh, anything uh, that uh, uh, and you don't need to uh, uh, focus about your uh, client as well so you you just uh, you just think uh, uh, what you actually uh, going to do and uh, which purpose you you would like to uh, use your database uh, as a service uh, so so this should be uh, clear from your side so so if you clear everything about uh, how you can use your database and how uh, how uh, how the time you can utilize for your uh, replicating to your another application so it's a very a very simple simple as easiest way to uh, do the uh, migration for your uh, database to on prem to cloud so uh, actually I, I i i already have uh, enough time to but uh, uh, my session was uh, uh, not so much uh, lengthy but uh, i think it's uh, uh, i covered my step what i uh, actually tried to present but uh, i am uh, i am i am very much interested to uh, get any uh, feedback from your side as well as the any question uh, related uh, azure sql replication or if you have any plan to uh, do how you can uh, actually uh, how you can brainstorm your uh, database and how you can uh, move to cloud so i am i am obviously there to help you so don't uh, don't hesitate to connect with me uh, i am available in a, everywhere based on the social media as well as the uh, community so you can ping me anytime and uh, i will help you uh, as much as I can. So, uh, Asan bhai, over to you. Nakib, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, Nakib, uh, I have talked with uh, Walker bhai. He has just uh, finished his uh, event in Singapore and he needs some time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, invite you to say something about the azure and sql database in like 15 minutes and uh, so that within that time asipai will join can you can it be possible maybe yeah maybe it's an open discussion and uh, if anyone mm -hmm. else wanted to join with us he may join um, actually from the early morning we have discussed many more things but uh, i think it will be better if we discuss some open topic uh, i will request sure. to uh, share if they want to know more in uh, no more uh, anything uh, out of the session uh, they can ask us what do you say nakib sure sure yes uh, i i am very much interested to uh, see the question so obviously it's uh, uh, very very helpful so when uh, when uh, anyone asks some question to understand which things so i i know i know this uh, i i can cover everything and uh, every step i know there there should be uh, some question for related uh, replication so maybe i missed something but uh, but uh, just 
uh, if you if you ask me some question then uh, this uh, this will be helpful to uh, share uh, in depth on uh, in any step uh, if i miss there actually we are uh, more familiar uh, repl uh, about the replication service on premises so can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about what are the what is replication and in which context we can use a replication feature of seco server say like in a distributed system or say in a distributed system where uh, we have many more servers say uh, we have a server in uh, server for dhaka division we may have another server for chiram division if you want to get the okay. consolidated data in that context replication may be useful mm -hmm. uh, i will invite you to say mm -hmm. this type of many more features that will be helpful for the audience to learn about the replication uses okay uh, the thing is actually yeah uh, it is possible fast fast uh, fast of fast is so uh, you you will see here is a three three database is already available in my on premises okay so this this is the this database actually i selected for my on premises let's see i don't have any cloud my uh, cloud tools or cloud subscription but what i am doing this uh, this three database is actually uh, uh, integrated to my three uh, three different application let's see this uh, test db is uh, working for my uh sila division uh, application uh, those sales team actually working from this test db and uh, test db one and two is all uh, is working for uh, Khulna and another is uh, let's see uh, uh, rush three uh, three different database working for for uh, three different application based on uh, three different division plan is to do i am um, now my planning is uh, uh, there is some downtime happening from my russia division uh, when uh, actually generating some data and pulling some data from my on premises and inserting data from uh, when i uploading file to my application now what what my plan is uh, my plan is to migrating my database to my uh, uh, to uh, to uh, cloud subscription so so uh, uh, what's my objective is uh, i i my first uh, objective is to i don't have enough time to uh, stop uh, i can it's, it's not possible to stop my application but but it's possible if i migrate this uh, database in a real time option uh, let's see uh, let's see i'm just connecting my database to my azure database so 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 every every information will migrate it to the uh, cloud uh, with 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 any 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 changes to my on premises so so what i what i shown today so i already define a database on i already take a, a database to uh, azure and uh, i am just just uh, showing him that uh, where you will pull the data which database you will replicate in real time so, so for that i am just enabling in from a server agent uh, that uh, replication feature then uh, then what i am uh, doing that uh, i am just uh, uh, asking him to open a, a test db2 a publisher so that i can take the all snapshot and the let's say we have a 6 uh, 60 gb database size then we can take a, a 60 gb snapshot to the azure cloud and uh, by the time by the time let's say i'm taking the snapshot on uh, uh, 2 pm and uh, and uh, my uh, my information is moving to cloud it's it's already took uh, 15 minutes let's see let's see 15 minutes in the in real time option within within 15 minutes they got uh, more information from their uh, customer side okay actually their uh, their client actually putting the information for their, their database in that time that uh, this this publisher and the replication uh, replicated database to cloud this will also work simultaneously taking the data what the what is the update information is coming to the their uh, local and uh, database so so there is uh, uh, there is no uh, problem actually facing to uh, do the uh, replication when 
our cloud server um, cloud database is already uh, ready to uh, use for our application then we can just uh, just uh, sh uh, show the database name uh, database name to our application and uh, this application will continuously work uh, as it is on the uh, local database thank you uh, Uh, Nakib, uh, so, uh, thank you, Asif Bhai. Yeah. Nakib, can you uh, actually, <clears throat> Asif Bhai has Asif Walker. I has just uh, uh, completed his session, so he has requested me to uh, change his session from now to half an hour. Say he wanted mm -hmm. to start his session at three thirty p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we discuss a uh, little bit more about the? uh sql server configuration and if we do some discussion so it will be helpful for the audience to get some extra knowledge beyond the section uh, what do you say yeah uh, sure sure uh, so uh, the sql server configuration is in uh, uh, we don't yeah nakib uh, uh, i am just sending uh, sending you some uh, a slide uh, actually i am an organization for this event so it will be quite difficult for me to play the organizing role and as well as the presenter role i'm going to okay. send you a presentation uh, can you please uh, mm -hmm. show it from your end? sure sure okay. sure no problem just send it to me i am presenting from here Uh, let me try. Okay. Can you see my skin? Yes, awesome. Yeah, well, I can see. We can see actually. Okay. Uh, so uh, it will be better if we are going uh, to discuss something more. Yes, uh, now the presentation skin has in your skin. Yes, yes. Okay. It, it's visible now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I want to see the audience size who are coming in our session. Uh, if most of the people are in uh, Bengali, then we may talk in Bangla. That will be easy for uh, them to understand. Uh, can you check one? Uh, let's uh, discuss about the. Uh, let's discuss about my session. Uh, Nakib, uh, I wanted to uh, present this session interactively, uh, as the audience is, sure. may have uh, may not have option to uh, interact with us. So I will request you to interact with you to say, uh, so that it will be more interactive for the audience. Sure, sure, sure. I want to say you the session is performance inside. Actually, I want to present this session because I have thought that uh -huh. there are many more topic are uh, there, and every topics as tons of materials are there. In if you search on YouTube or if you search on Google, but I have found that uh, there are few more important things that are uh, very important for the performance. And these things are not addressed uh, very much. So I have uh, taken this session uh, and named it Performance Insight. Actually, I wanted to start it from the SQL Server, uh, SQL Server installation to SQL Server management. So uh -huh. if we go through this session, first of all, I wanted to uh,
first of all i want to thank sekul sir uh, pass uh, pass uh, that pass has given us an opportunity to grow a community in bangladesh and we are working on it and uh, many more speakers many more audience has uh, come and join in these sessions and la in, from last five years we are arranging second saturday session here in bangladesh you know and i think it uh, it will be great for the audience mm -hmm. to share knowledge and get knowledge and it will be also a network among us uh, Mm -hmm. the professionals what do you think yes uh, obviously this is uh, actually without uh, community uh, you know this uh, pandemic situation uh, we are not facing each other but uh, this community activity is actually gathering everyone in a, in a single call so this is a really great opportunity to sharing the knowledge with others and uh, without actually wasting any time and facing the uh, this uh, pandemic situation so we are actually uh, utilizing this right it's uh, actually i have thought that it's a great opportunity that uh, may, our community may not have the, have the ability to bring a foreign speaker from usa to bangladesh but uh, in the pandemic situation they are uh, online and they has input their uh, valuable uh, ideas valuable experience to exactly. us <laughs> i think exactly exactly it's a great so matter for uh, us as well yeah uh, uh, in my from my previous experience we are working in a very long time but uh, i i believe the uh, this pandemic situation is actually uh, opening the door to communicating a, every every person from the different corner as well as uh, this is the first time maybe we organizing and inviting uh, a speaker from outside uh, for this uh, um, event so this is a big opportunity yeah. actually this is a big opportunity in this worst situation <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah true true it's That's very true <laughs> thank you very much uh, first of all i want to thanks uh, our uh, past global uh, sponsors and uh, you know the past global sponsor is microsoft azure dell technology global cloud and uh, many more other uh, organization and uh, they are uh, continuously sponsoring to run the pass actually you know the pass is a organization who is a, who is working voluntarily globally and uh, they are men uh, they are working from chicago usa so again we are thankful for sponsoring and uh, it is an uh, opportunity for the professional to grow their uh, community activities. Uh, so first of all, that, uh, Nakib, that I wanted to say that uh, I wanted to start my session from configuration. Actually, what is the configuration? Sure. Really, uh, I wanted to mean that, that before starting, uh, before installation of SQL Server, we need to configure some hardware size, hardware uh, size, uh, hardware perspective also. That uh, hardware perspective means mm -hmm. BIOS setup actually, um, uh, mm -hmm. say BIOS power power management features and networking features, I/O features, these features. These are the features that will be uh, on, need to be more effectively configurable so that. Uh, whenever the application or database is running on the system it will be uh, properly effectively work uh, so before going towards my presentation i want to i want to introduce myself uh, with the audience uh, i am asan kubir and i am uh, running the local past chapter and actually i am not running it i actually i am actually think i am a moderator and uh, you all guys are the <coughs> Keep people who actually run the organization pass local chapter tech forum. Actually, I am working uh, currently uh, on data and cloud platform, and actually uh, our environment. We are uh, in our environment. We manage DevOps, DevOps, DevOps concept for um, and implementation as well as. And I like to and I love to work on community. 
and it will be uh, a great uh, it will not a it, it don't have any monetary value but it's a great uh, opportunity for uh, introduce with the new faces and getting a better experience and it will be helpful for me to know many yeah, more. Yeah, actually, uh, from my concept, yeah, obviously, yes. and community my... work actually, uh, community work is opening the uh, door to uh, generate uh, actually more connection. So uh, we, are, we are knowing each other from different corner of the world. So this is is very very good opportunity actually earlier we communicating between the country but uh, now the pen in a pandemic situation uh, an opportunity has created to uh, introduce and grow our network between the uh, globe mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah. so i'm going to uh, uh, first of all i want to focus on the on the thing that uh, power management actually you know the power management feature is an important thing whenever you are going to set up uh, a server and that will uh, run a larger system actually uh, we don't care most of the cases we don't care about these things but i love to uh, share it because if uh, we are not properly uh, configured the bios power management feature that will make some uh, problematic issue in the context of performance actually why this is these things are happen so that i have written here it, to ensure that it is firing on the all cylind cylinders which in turn will allow the hypervisor to allocate the abstract resource actually if we are not properly uh, the power management feature should be high performance in some context if it is set default uh, low or many other option then it will not properly work so if we run a database server then we wanted to set the uh, power feature as high performance so it will then uh, uh, give us the proper uh, processor capacity second thing that i want to address is uh, we need to do something and we need not to do something actually what I want to mean that uh, in some context we are when we are going to install software um, then we are not care about the what are the features that we need in our current system say we are going to install all the features and all the services so when these things are happening then uh, all may, maybe we are we are not using SQL server integration service maybe we are not using SQL server analysis service but if we enable those service and this service will consume the resource and in, in that context, this resource consumption will uh, impact on the system because they are always running and uh, maybe it will deteriorate the performance of the SQL Server database engine. And uh, another thing uh, we need to know that always we try to update the SQL Server uh, patches and SQL Server Windows service package so that uh, always we can keep our system up to date what do you think nakib yeah uh, obviously so uh, as per our uh, previous uh, presenter andy also shared the same thing so sometimes we are doing uh, or uh, querying uh, different types of uh, information and uh, for for doing that uh, we have to make sure our all feature is up to date or patch update is uh, very recent right i think it's uh, it's a very actually i have seen in my career that uh, in most of the cases whenever we are going to uh, install first time then we are care about the uh, service pack and patches but in periodic gradually maybe one or two hour two year later uh -huh. not care about the service pack we are not care about the patches so uh, in that context many uh, many of a struggle uh, has to face do you have any experience yeah. about that yeah uh, i i already have an experience uh, so the thing is actually when uh, there is actually uh, i'm not uh, showing uh, seeing the uh, 
uh, I'm not going to share the name of the customer. So the thing is they're using uh, their uh, SQL uh, server in, uh, in 2012 R2. But uh, their application is uh, is using for another services uh, and build also a .NET Core. But uh, when when they uh, they try to connect their uh, another application uh, from uh, from uh, for their best uses. But uh, but thing is there there was some uh, actually error happening for their database uh, uh, database table. So what I what I found there there is a, uh, there is a version problem was happen uh, for connecting an application. So right. that time I suggest him to uh, just make sure uh, whatever you are using you, you may use it 12 or 16 or 19 whatever but just make sure that uh, for that version the patch address is also also is up to, up to date. Right. Thank you for your suggestion, and uh, I think it's a good suggestion for the audience also. In 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 their context, they will careful about the things. Uh, now the things I wanted to recommend everyone that uh, if we are using uh, different instance and different instance has different type of database, so we wanted to uh, arrange a, uh, arrange those database. Say we uh, say data and log file need to be arranged in a, in a uh, location so that it uh, easily identify or whenever we are taking backup or if we are using replication on other features then it will be easy to understandable of what type of what database and where and and its concerned file is located in a single location so that uh, it will be better to manage it and manageability will be better uh it's just a recommendation and i think it will be better to manage all those things uh second thing that i wanted to uh, put in the uh, face that latency and disk queue length whenever the things is happen in some time we are facing that the database engine is slow and uh, people are uh, trying to figure out which is what are the reason for that uh, the latency is have a uh, let low latency is happen so in that context uh, it is recommended that if we are going to use the uh, solid state disk ssd and it will be better uh, for performance context and if we want to figure out what is the uh, current situation say uh, most of the time maybe uh, database is not working bad but in some in some peak time it will not performing as it uh, required say uh, we need to <clears throat> monitor these things this performance actually if the disk performance uh, write latency read write latency is uh, less than or equal to five millisecond then it will be uh, good but if it will cross the 10 or more than that that will be bad for the uh, database engine to perform a uh, performance management so, so we have a uh, built-in feature of SQL server that tools is called performance uh, that will will easily uh, figure out the current uh, read rate latency and another thing i want to mention that here that uh, tmdb in some context we are using raid and other feature for backup and uh, system manage system properly handle uh, handle and system proper backup management purpose uh, in that context uh, i i would i would love to suggest that the that uh, we need not to uh, make uh, tmdb in their redundant uh, in a redundant dead disk and not need not to manage its uh, data and log file in a in a single uh, disk and it will be better if they uh, located their uh, tmdb's data and log uh, data and log file in different disk location then it will be better uh, in that context the thing which is happen which has hap which will happen that the disk io performance will be better so it will uh, hopefully if we are following these things then it will be better for uh, database engines 
uh, read write performance enhancement. Uh, the, now I am. I want to say the SQL Server and SQL Server Agent Service. SQL Server is specific. Uh, is specific after the first and second subsequent failure. Uh, SQL Server Agent is proper uh, property base. You can ensure that SQL Server Service or SQL Server Agent Service will restart automatically if they stop. In some context, we need not. We are not going to uh, set this feature that uh, after the failure sql server is not uh, uh, sql server is not restart automatically uh, we need to uh, keep this feature on restart automatically then it will be better if any context say power failure if or any other reason if the sql server database engine is shut down you know, when the OS is, when the computer we are going to on the computer then if this feature is on then it will be uh, then the database will be uh, executable without any human interaction and also the also there is an uh, option that uh, in many contexts we are using the, the sql server agent service basically uh, if we have many type of schedule job in that context we are using sql server agent service so in some context i have found in my in my uh, previous uh, working time that uh, sql server uh, we are not managing the proper uh, proper uh, thing what will happen if sql server agent service is failed so we need to focus on that if sql server agent service is failure then if SQL Server Agent Service is not working properly, then all the scheduled job will be failed. So we have to uh, take a specific action after the first and second subsequent failure. SQL Server Agent property pays. You can ensure that SQL Server Service or SQL Server Agent Service will restart automatically if they stop unexpectedly. SQL Server Port. Actually, in the security context, it will it is a very uh, important thing that uh, by default SQL Server is working on 1433 port. But uh, if we want to keep our system secure, then we need to uh, change the default port from 1443 to another. Actually, uh, as the 1433 port is very much familiar. And in some context, if the database is uh, in the net or if the database is accessible from other corner, then maybe in some context, it will be a vulnerable situation may happen. Uh, SQL Server automatic, uh, SQL Server automatic, actually SQL Server maintenance plan, SQL Server replication or any other SQL Server agent job, it is recommended to change uh, the start mobile mode uh, of SQL Server agent and SQL Server integration service to automatic. So on each is server restart or service will start automatically. You can configure that start uh, property of this service from the SQL Server configuration manager. Uh, Nagib, have you seen that uh, this uh, SQL Server automatic, uh, automatic feature is not on in some context? Have you seen in any mm, still uh, still now i uh, don't yet but uh, i think uh, uh, this should be a uh, very much focusing area uh, so oh, from the next time i will ask uh, anyone actually if, if i will ask someone to do, though who are actually using sql uh, server based on their uh, on premises and facing these types of issue Another interesting thing is that uh, maybe you have seen that uh, in some context people are uh, uh, people uh, are complaining that their memory is full and um, SQL Server database engine is very slow. Have you uh, got, uh, faced this type of thing? Yeah, this uh, this is very common problem. Uh, actually, those who are using SQL uh i think so i this this slide is uh, very effective from uh, effective from uh, for them maybe actually it is suggested that uh, wherever we are going to um, uh, going to allocate the maximum and minimum memory size 
we uh, actually in the time of initial configuration we are not bothered on that but it's a very much important thing if we are not set the maximum uh, memory that SQL Server database engine will going to occupy uh, then it will be problematic for the ways to uh, work actually uh, ways has some requirement and ways have to have some uh, uh, reserved memory so that they, uh, the ways can work properly if the ways is not working properly then database is not uh, working properly in the most cases i have seen that uh, in max in, in configuration window uh, people are not people uh, allocated by default all the memory that are available in that context the thing happens that uh, okay the thing happens so, awesome, one more question here yeah right. uh, so one more question here so is there any recommendation for the memory allocation uh, for using sql server right actually uh, uh, microsoft has uh, microsoft has recommended that at, uh, at least 20% of total memory or 20 gb which is lower uh, need to uh, block for the operating system uh, you can see it in the first line in this case uh, in the if uh, the calculation is in the in the middle of the uh, paragraph that if uh, you are using physical mem physical pc say if you are using a using a pc that actually uh, use for database engine database engine or as a database server in that context you need to uh, keep 20 gb of memory 20 gb of memory for the waste and rest will be used for the uh, SQL server engine. Mm -hmm. But if you are you if you if your uh, system is working as a VM VMware, then you need to uh, SQL max server memory plus thread stack and plus waste memory and VM over it need to be uh, carefully handled. Actually, this is the calculation and we uh, hope that uh, the in future uh, who are not uh, managing this uh, mathematics will follow this sql server file and file group actually uh, it is very much important that uh, sql server file and file group actually need to manage in a fashion that it will work properly actually if we want to get the proper io io uh say you know every disk has a single io most of the uh, previous system uh, where the cylindrical disk are used in that context uh, the thing uh, or the problem is happen that disk io is one and if we are keeping all the file and file groups in a single disk then it will be uh, very much problematic to read and write and it will create a read and write queue and read that uh, read and write latency become high in that then the thing uh, user will face that database engine becomes slow so we will be careful about that if we have more disk then it will be preferable to keep the different file in different disk uh, there is a okay. nice. uh, there is an important uh, feature of is uh, in the configuration window that is called max drop maximum degree of parallelism uh, it's a actually uh, sql server actually uh, these things are very much ignored i have seen have you seen it max drop feature actually if we have yeah. right have. Mm -hmm. say we have eight core and uh, sql server actually uh, thing uh, individual logical processor in a one numerical node physical processor when every core is uh, act as a physical processor else that number so it is recommended that if you are going to use red level 10 for that binary data and log file and mdb for the best performance are available so we are going to use red level 10 A max worker max worker thread uh, these things are also ignored uh, whenever we are uh, configuring the max worker thread that uh, how much uh, worker thread will work together 
next worker thread of opinion or help us to optimize the performance when large number of clients are connected to a SQL server. Say uh, we have a system uh, that concurrently 10,000 or 5,000 concurrent user are uh, interact with the database. In that, in this type of large system, we need to uh, careful about the max worker thread. If hundreds of simultaneous connection are made to the SQL ser server, then one thread per query request would consume large amount of system resource. The max worker thread op option help to improve the performance by enabling SQL to create a pool to, of work thread to service a large number of uh, query requests. Actually, the thing uh, is happened whenever a connection is created and in a connection, many type of requests are coming towards the database engine. So uh, if the system is uh, large and uh, simultaneously or concurrently, many user are uh, requesting to get data in that context, we need to careful about the max worker thread. Uh, is read committed snapshot enable? Actually, uh, in the in the session of Deepthi, he has uh, addressed some atomicity context. Actually, snapshot is a thing that we need to uh, careful. Uh, if we are, if the if we are are not uh, want to face the deadlock situation. Nakib, can you please tell something about the, your experience on this read committed snapshot? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Or yeah, I think uh, my voice was breaking. So. Okay. Maybe some network issue. So just uh, so now, yeah. it's okay. Actually, uh, that thing. Yeah. I wanted to. I want to share that uh, is read committed snapshot and actually uh, wherever uh, any request come from a data a data table, data from a table and the transaction will do some update or do some insert operation. In that context, a deadlock situation may be happen. And to avoid the deadlock situation, eliminate the deadlock situation, the isolation level under which a transaction transition is, uh, statement execute determine its lock or and row version or behavior. Actually, that thing happened that uh, if we uh, say we are going to uh, up, uh, send a update SQL and uh, two uh, simultaneous connection is uh, wanted to do a update in a single table in that situation the deadlock may happen to avoid the situation we need to do that uh, earlier the snapshot uh, is the read committed snapshot enable feature was not uh, present in that uh, context we need to uh, do uh, use the begin and commit transition and begin and commit transition uh, between the begin and commit transition uh, is slower actually but uh, we need to for, uh, we need to enable the is read committed snapshot isolation in that context it will not block any rows uh, other than it will its it's use the mechanism of row versioning so uh, say i am going to update some data and another connection is going to update some data but it will not uh, handle same uh, same record same record but it will uh, use the uh, row versioning say i am going to update first then the row version will run and if you are going to update that uh, table same record then the update version will be two so it will be better to avoid the uh, deadlock situation nakip can you want do you want to say more on that yeah i think you already covered all things uh, this is yeah, actually you. things is uh, with commit snapshot <laughs> okay thank you uh, one more thing I wanted to address that minimum memory per query. When a query is run, SQL try to allocate the optimum amount of memory for its run 
effectively by default the main memory per query setting is uh, 1 kb one 1024 kb for each query to run best practice is to leave this setting at the default value zero to allow sql to dynamically manage the amount of memory allocated for the index creation operation and and blah blah actually the thing uh, is minimum memory per query if we are going to set minimum memory per query then the memory will be allocated for that query only maybe uh, if we are running a query that will not use that allocated memory but it will be default default allocated so the thing that uh, maybe uh, happen the thing may happen that if we are using a system where the concurrently thousand people are connected in that context if we are going to allocate uh, at least one mb uh, memory for each user each request then it will need uh, the memory uh, then the request will be in queued and it will deteriorate the performance as well so uh, it will be better to allocate uh, dynamic fitch dynamically feature then it will uh, take the amount of memory the query is needed so unnecessary uh, memory uh, block will not happen uh, remote query timeout actually remote query timeout is used to decide how long a remote query will take before a SCO server timeout actually these things are happen if uh, whenever the network situation uh, is not fine say uh, we have a system we have a user he is working from Gaibanda if we have a, have a user who is working from uh, Rangpur or if we have a user who is working from uh in that context the network is not uh, smooth or earlier uh, earlier days is this type of situation is happened because uh, until the query execution is uh, complete the time out will happen then people will uh, face uh, people means actually the end user will face uh, unnecessary uh, error timeout feature and uh, it will be very much problematic for a end user to understand what is uh, mean by the timeout so it will be better to keep the uh, zero so that the uh, it will not uh, dis disconnect until the query execution uh, complete uh, set the default index fill factor the fill factor value is a percentage from 1 to 100 and the default is 0 the same as 100 which means that the leaf level pages are totally filled actually uh, you know whenever we are uh, making making or we are uh, creating index uh, most of the cases the thing is happen the leaf level and the leaf level and the node and the root node uh, has depth maximum 100 if uh, it is happened that uh, it will uh, grow more or the depth become high then it will be uh, problematic for the searching operation so it will uh, so whenever we are going to do that uh, we will uh, do it uh, set it uh, and in an optimized level so that uh, performance will not be deteriorated hyper threading uh, I think uh, Nakib, you can say something about the hyper threading. Asama, you can uh, go ahead. No problem. Okay. I'm hearing here. Hyper threading is an uh, actually uh, uh, hyper threading is uh, actually a hypervisor technology that exposed to hardware context from a single physical core. These thread are referred to as a logical cpu it is common misconnection misconnection that hyper threading double the number of cpu or core this is simple simply not to the case hyper threading improve the overall host throughput from 10 to 30 percent by keeping the processor pipeline busier and allowing the hypervisor more opportunity to schedule cpu clock cycle or so you should definitely 
take advantage of hyper threading by enabling it in the BIOS of the VM host machine. Actually, hyper, if we uh, keep the uh, hyper threading enable, uh, want to keep the enable the hyper threading, then it will be better to uh, configure it in BIOS level actually. Uh, max drop feature, maximum degree of parallelism. Max drop parallelism is a uh, specific number of processor used in a parallel uh, parallel plan execution. Actually, you know, whenever a query is running, uh, that query will uh, create a plan. Uh, how the query will be uh, executed in uh, I think in the November uh, September session, uh, one of our speaker has detailed discussed about the uh, query plan and how the query plan will be selected and maybe in a for a simple a single SQL statement may have multiple query plan so uh, whenever we are going to set uh, how many core will be involved to execute the query then it will be uh, better actually uh, say the thing is that we have uh, eight core. If full eight core is involved to execute a single query, then the other query will take time, or a queue will be generated for query execution. So, if if it is better if we allocate uh, allocate or configure the maximum number of uh, logical core will be handle a query, then it will be reduce the qu uh, query execution queue. So, uh, it will be a good feature and uh, recently i have uh, I, I have worked in a large system where um, concurrently uh, more than 5000 uh, user are working and in that context i have seen that uh, they complain about the database systems performance and i have seen that the max drop setting is not properly configured so after uh, configuring that max drop feature and the radically the performance will be improved actually in the most cases or the technical people work on to fine tune on the sql queries and they are going to select uh, their first step is to uh, make some index uh, and uh, the, my my experience says that we are creating index but we are not using index and we are going to uh, figure out the which which one is the SQL statement, which one uh, de uh, occur delayed. This type of uh, investigation is we are going to uh, do for a against a complaint. But we are not um, managing the proper configuration so that the system can perform, system can perform and may perform properly. So max drop is a very much important feature and it will help you to improve your system's performance so uh, these are the things that we have discussed so far uh, nakib can you uh, say more about um, yeah i think this about, yeah. about your experience presentation yeah, sure. Now we can. Yeah, I think this is the open discussion. Mm -hmm. Discussion so that uh, it will be better for the audience to understand. Actually, if we are uh, doing or if we are uh, following some slide and if we have some uh, already uh, made food for the audience, then maybe uh, the audience may not want to uh, eat that. But I want to. Uh, share some experience of us towards the audience so if they have some problem they are facing currently and they can uh, share with us so that we can uh, maybe we can help them to overcome that problem what do you th think yeah sure uh, we, we as a community person are very much interested to know the question uh, what, and the problem what you are facing 
so uh, don't hesitate to connect with us or uh, share your uh, thought and the problem as well just uh, put your question to the chat box or uh, anytime on on our facebook groups so uh, just uh, put there and we'll obviously help you to understand uh, any and solve the problem as well so uh, thank you asan bhai obviously and uh, i think this uh, this slide is very much helpful based on the context and configuration and obviously the first one is very very uh, very very important for uh, uh, doing a sql setup for the power management so i think uh, this is a, a good knowledge sharing for others and uh, I, i'm seeing here the asif uh, wakar is in here to uh, show his uh, presentation uh, hi hi asif how are you I, I think you are on mute. Uh, can you please uh, just unmute yourself? Yeah, sure. I am going to unmute uh, Mr. Asif. Asif, bhai, are you there? Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Sun. Bhai, uh, thanks, Nakib. Bhai, really nice to see you all. Uh, sorry for uh, the late. Uh, you know. Uh, no. Uh, connected actually it's a great matter asif uh, in a single day you have participated in two seco saturday session and i have seen <laughs> another speaker to attend <laughs> to attend uh, two separate yeah. session in different countries in a day yeah strong uh, it was actually yeah not possible if it is not virtual so yeah thanks to <laughs> virtual uh, it's like we organize a uh, singapore seco saturday the whole day and uh, yeah it's uh, now here uh, thanks uh, for providing opportunity uh, thank you asif okay, uh, so we have over and uh, now you can uh, if you want you can present your session sure uh, you can just make me presenter uh, okay so okay thank you very much i am uh, nakib are you there So, bye. I'm here. Okay. Thank you very much. So yeah, now we need to make Asif Bai as a presenter for this session. Uh, Asif Bai, can you allow one minute to do that? Sure. Asif Bai, it's all right. uh yeah uh, are you able to see my screen yeah we can okay, okay. Uh, thank you <laughs> thank you so much uh, hi uh, everyone uh, thanks for joining uh, assalam alaikum my name is mohammad asif wakar and uh, i am a solution architect at ibn amr bank okay so let me just uh, open my slides here Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the blockchain and the data. So means like suppose uh, the major challenge we face is uh, in our organization is uh, like uh, when I ask my uh, bosses like I want to do something on a blockchain. So they said uh, why you want a blockchain? Another application, you know, why should I spend the more uh, amount of cost uh, to do another application for the same job? so that's where uh, we did some research and we came to know that uh, how we can integrate uh, you know our existing applications like a .net java or sap or any other applications to blockchain network so that's what i'm going to discuss today and uh, how we are going to manage about the data because uh, if you talk about the blockchain it's not something uh, very new because we are uh, using the same concept from uh, years like uh, 30 40 years and more than that actually so it's all about the managing the data uh thanks for uh, pass community for organizing this event and uh, there are uh, some uh, if you if you are interested you can join some uh, free webinar organized by pass community and you can also join uh, uh, their uh, local groups and events you can also be a part of uh, the pass community by as a volunteer and if you have missed the 
past communities meet up summit last year so there are a uh, recording available for that you can just go and download from there it's a uh, pastup.com and thanks for uh, the global sponsor for organizing this event and uh, many thanks for uh, Sam Bai and team uh, for uh, Bangladesh to organizing this event it's about me. Uh, I'm Asif Wakar, Mohammad Asif Wakar. I'm a solution architect at ABNR Bank, Singapore. And I'm a Microsoft MVP at uh, Microsoft Azure platform. I'm a certified architect of uh, for the blockchain in uh, using different framework like Corda and Hyperledger. So when we talk about the blockchain, uh, if you see my the first image, like uh, in 1980s, how we used to store the data because the data I means like I have taken this picture from uh, one of uh, Indian uh, offices like uh, even though some of the offices are there like that it's uh, not new so there used to be a pile of uh, files and uh, ledgers and the notes and like so the data used to be managed in terms of file and uh, storage all those things like that but later on when it came for uh, moving to Miss, there was some improvement like when the internet came and uh, the word excel all those came and then we slowly moved from files to the computer where you can store all the data in terms of uh, in folders files excel words so what was the problem and uh, why we need a blockchain actually so blockchain is nothing but a decentralized database with strong consistency support what it means is uh, it's a multi-party system so where exactly all the parties will maintain a set of the data, local copy of the data, and uh, it will be consistent data. Means like suppose there are uh, different parties, uh, like uh, there are different organizations. So they will maintain a set of node. Node will be like basically the application. And uh, so on all the organizations node, so whatever the transactions you are going to perform between the organizations, so they will maintain a copy of the transaction. So that actually blockchain helps. So in in this scenario means like uh, when the there was a used to be like files and then it moves to internet and we used to store the files in uh, Word or Excel. So what was the problem actually? So the problem was uh, like what's the actually problem is so if we are taking like uh, now we have uh, obviously the world google docs all those but it is all maintained at the central level like uh, there is obviously because uh, it is maintained by the microsoft servers it is maintained by the google servers or some other providers so they, it is all centralized so in case if something happens although they have a very good uh, disaster recovery and fault tolerance policies but suppose if uh, you know something happened into one country and completely all the data centers or uh, all the I means like parties are completely I um, mean like there is no uh, data centers left and all the data is gone okay so what it will be then how we are going to so it's a centralized system it can be a situation that I means like uh, the complete uh, this data is lost okay so in that scenario the multi-party system like a blockchain is really helpful because is the data is maintained with the different parties and it is a consistent data so if i have a data of x copy same copy will be on the different node as well so if my node is uh, destroyed in some disaster so obviously i will have another copy which will which i can retrieve back easily so that's the uh, means uh, beauty of the blockchain so what type of problems exactly it solves so like suppose a uh, few years back i want to means like in 90s when i want to buy a home okay so i need to go to a different people means like uh, like i need to go to a bank i need to go to a land of registry i need to go to an insurance company i need to go to a property inspector separately i need to provide a lot of documents for that and what they will do they will verify my documents same set of documents and they will verify the same set of information multiple times and there will be a lot of intermediary parties like agents will be involved in that. So, so it was a kind of point to point, uh, you know, communication between the parties like bank want some information from the property inspector. So he will request from that and it will take time for getting those information. Same as this bank need to uh, same information he need to request from the land of registry 
and if insurance company want to give you insurance so they will request the details from the banks so it was a kind of point to point and everyone is maintaining a set of data everyone is maintaining a set of copy of the records in like uh, in files or in docs or whatever okay so there was a trust gap because in each party like uh, either insurance bank because they they maintain their own system they have their own standards so there is a trust gap they don't want I mean, like they say it's like i don't know how is your data I mean, like they don't trust the data or the data of other party so there is a trust gap and there was an inefficiency of the data I means like same kind of report is maintained by insurance agency and uh, similar report is maintained by the bank and similar report is maintained by the property inspector or land of authority so it was a kind of repetitive and uh, inefficiency of the data data duplication and quite expensive process because same thing if there are a lot of uh, intermediary parties like agents are involved to do the job which you have to pay a lot of lot of huge amount of fee so i uh, mean like uh, as i can belongs to a country from india and uh, like you know there there are a lot of frauds and even though suppose if i want to buy a property and one property might be registered on a six people name and i i don't have any evidence to verify and uh, if i have to go to the property inspector banks all those but still there, there might be fraud for that so how we can avoid such kind of problems so if we are going for a blockchain related solution in that what it will be that uh, all the parties like uh, banks land of registry buyer seller appraiser they will form a consortium consortium is nothing but a kind of group of the organizations or a company uh, they want to perform a transactions they want to like for a pro property purchase they will form a consortium so after uh, forming the consortium what it will happen is a uh, seller will go and post the property in like a kind of marketplace so there will be multiple buyers they can go and bid for the property so they don't need to look for any um, so how we know that the property is legitimate because there will be land of registry will will which will verify the property details so it will ensure that all the properties on the platform is a legitimate properties or uh, means correct properties and so if we know the property is uh, correct all the documents are correct and uh, so any insurance company or any bank will easily give a loan so what it helps is it helps to provide a real time review because uh, when you are going to sell the property so on the marketplace and who is going to bid so seller have a complete view that how many people are means interested in his property and he can accept the bid he can reject the bid and there is no intermediary because previously we used to have a lot of agents in the middle like uh, for selling the property the buying the property they always have a cut of 2 to 5 4% to 5% or up to 10% for in buying and selling properties now there is no need for agent because both can you know in the same platform they can just go and bid for the property and can buy or sell the property and whenever is any seller is going to put the property in the marketplace or and on the platform they need to provide all the evidence and documents from where the property was started and all those documents everything so they have a proof of ownership who own this property exactly and this whole process is a automated process in terms of uh, digital smart contracts so digital smart contracts helps to uh, automate the process and uh, if you have a certain terms and conditions so that can be included in terms of contracts and in terms of multi party auditing like such, suppose seller got a uh, i means uh, bid from 1000 buyers but he only selected one or two or means like first 10 buyers to consider so he can reject means like or uh, he can accept so or he can just he don't want to sell the property he can completely terminate the process so that's a multi party auditing and decentralized contract execution so once it is uh, contract is uh, you know when once the seller have put the property in the marketplace so it will be notified to all the parties so they know that this transition is happening and they have a real time review for that so that's how it uh, works for the blockchain so but blockchain is uh, implementing a blockchain is also uh, you know it's like a really a difficult uh, situation as of now because what the major challenges we we are facing is uh, like in our organization when we try to implement a blockchain so the major thing was we don't want any separate application for the blockchain we want 
to integrate our app, existing app on the blockchain network. So that was our first goal. So if you if you have any SAP CRM, SharePoint, or Dynamic CRM, any applications, and you want to integrate with the blockchain network, so that was the first challenge we have. Second was suppose if I am living in a village area, but I don't have any blockchain. Uh, you know network or uh, application available so how i can perform the transaction on the blockchain network so that was the second challenge and third was like security because all the parties in current scenario all the parties are maintaining their own systems they having their own security standards some are good some are bad but with the blockchain consortium like a group all will have a same security standard standards so they will have a digital assets verifying verification audit trail in going forward in demo, I will show how exactly it will happen. So these were the basic challenges we have. Now, uh, this was application level challenges. Now, now it's a, sorry, enterprise level. Now it's a application level challenges. Because building a blockchain network is not an easy task. Like you have to be expertise. You have to manage the business logic, API management, orchestration of the integration, keys, application, all those, a lot of stuff. And suppose I want to test my idea just to, because it's a completely new concept and I want to test my idea to make a simple prototype. And I don't want to spend a thousand of dollars on just making, uh, you know, maintaining the whole infrastructure, keeping the team and all. So what best we can do? So that was uh, another challenge we have, like in terms of, uh, that was a technical challenge and enterprise challenges. Like it was uh, for I mean, like for us, it was a situation like how to start actually the blockchain. Then we came to know uh, Microsoft as a blockchain as a service. So what Microsoft is doing is uh, really good in terms of they are providing a different blockchain as a service. One is the Azure blockchain as a service. Second is the blockchain data manager, and third is the Azure blockchain tokens and uh, blockchain development kit. So Azure blockchain as a service is a SaaS sorry, pass service, it's a, uh, you can create a whole uh, blockchain network within few clicks. You just need to provide a few details of your resources and all where exactly you're going to host and the names and all, and you can just create a whole consortium. You don't need to be expertise for creating the, and managing the VMs and infrastructure, all those things. You don't need to do that. Microsoft is doing for you. Second is the blockchain data manager. Data manager is uh, helpful. Currently, suppose uh, the major challenges with the blockchain network is if you're going to perform the transaction, so they are going to save the data in terms of states. And you can also integrate your uh, local DB. Okay. But if you have huge amount of data, so we, they don't have, you know, kind of uh, services, or uh, event listeners to capture all those data and process into a uh, blockchain network of frameworks. So what Microsoft did is uh, they try to create a service called Blockchain Data Manager, which helps to it helps to capture the data from different sources, like in terms of files, IoT, or like suppose census data or IoT data, and uh, like files, logs, all those things, and process with the help of Event Grid, which is a Microsoft Azure Event Grid, and uh, to as a blockchain as a service. And from there, you can store the data in terms of uh, SQL, SQL Server and uh, can terms of show also in the terms of reports. So that's a really uh, nice feature they are providing. And uh, third is a token. So you can uh, tokenize it's like uh, your assets, like uh, suppose your asset is a uh, real estate properties. So you can tokenize those assets in terms of uh, for uh, buying or selling. So that also happens. They are providing a service. And third, fourth is a blockchain development kit. They are providing a uh, extension for the Visual Studio code to do the development uh, more user friendly. It's like you don't need to be very expertized in terms of uh, command prompt. And uh, they are already providing a very nice uh, GUI features to do the development. You don't need to install a lot of stuff of uh, blockchain development kit and tools and all. Okay, so and for fifth one is uh, that's called the blockchain Azure blockchain workbench. So what Azure blockchain workbench is uh, do is they are really helpful in terms of uh, creating prototype blockchain prototype, the existing apps. 
So how they integrate? They integrate with your existing app with the help of APIs. So when you are creating a blockchain Azure Workbench, it uh, creates a lot few resources, which one of them is also an API. So it exposes the API to integrate with your existing apps. So those APIs can be uh, can be also integrated with your an another uh, blockchain ledger like Hyperledger, Chain, or Forum like that. So this is how the architecture look like. So previously we used to have a blockchain network, now which is replaced by Microsoft Azure Workbench, and it maintains a copy of the SQL Server database. It maintains a copy of the smart contracts, and it maintains all your Azure services. And uh, from the Azure Workbench, we can expose the APIs, which is the public and private APIs, and then it helps to connect with your uh, client apps, like uh, with your .NET Java or whatever your app is. Okay, and uh, as I explained earlier, for the data manager, blockchain data manager, what it helps is it helps to collect the data from uh, different sources, like might be IoT data, logs data, media data, files data, and uh, then it helps to process with the help of service bus and uh, logic apps to the blockchain service, and uh, that blockchain service will push the data into a, maybe your SQL Server storage, PostgreSQL, or uh, yeah. And then we can show in the terms of reports or power apps how you want. Okay, so let's uh, go through now uh, the demo and see uh, how exactly these all things happen. So by end of uh, session, what you're going to see is, uh, I have created actually uh, two demos. Uh, one is, uh, this is the pet shop. Uh, this is a blockchain based application. I have created for uh, using Azure Blockchain Workbench, sorry, Azure Blockchain as a service. So if you see my, it is connected to my ABS as a blockchain as a service. And what I'm going to do is uh, like, we are going to adopt the, you know, this uh, docs here. So I, how, what exactly I'm doing in the backend behind scene is, I have created a uh, smart contract because all the blockchain, if you're going to write the smart contracts, so that smart contract is written in uh, terms of uh, language called Solidity. So you need to have a bit idea of the Solidity, how exactly it happens. And uh, you need to also have a Azure Blockchain Development Kit. Azure Blockchain Development Kit, which I told earlier for uh, Yeah, so this is the extension which is provided by Microsoft Azure. So you don't need to, um, after installing this application, uh, extension, so you can just go and uh, directly create the project. It will give you the option like you want to create a new project. And once you choose a new project, so it will ask you the name. And uh, then you can just go and create the basic project, or you can also take from some of the sample examples. And uh, it will create for you a basic hello world application for you. Okay, so currently, if you see, I have created a very basic app, simple for adopting the means docs for this. So if you see here, I am just uh, trying like just doing uh, who is going to send uh, like who is going to adopt for this, and this ID I'm going to save. And uh, what? Actually, my what it helps to do is uh, with the blockchain development kit, it helps you to provide, uh, suppose if you are not very friendly of uh, command prompt. So, but even though you can just right click on that and you can build the contracts, deploy the contracts. So deploying having two, a couple of options actually here. One is uh, on the blockchain as a service. And uh, there is also for the local, if you have a local blockchain network, or the third is uh, like, if you have, uh, there is a called Infura, for that, so it will provide uh, like you a couple of options. I have already created for the Azure blockchain as a service. So if you can see my config here, and same as this, this is my local network. So let me show exactly how it looks like. So this is my local network, which is a local blockchain network, and second is my uh, Azure blockchain uh, workbench. And uh, 
to communicate this blockchain to uh, this blockchain network, we need a plugin called the MetaMask plugin. So this is for your local development setup. Actually, I'm not going to cover deep because it's a data session. So yeah. Um, uh, second thing, what you can do is uh, you can uh, generate the data publishing workflows. Like uh, suppose you want to uh, miss whenever you are performing any actions, so you want to capture the actions and save the data into the SQL Server database. So what you can do is you can choose this option. Let's call it generate data publishing workflows for the smart contract. So what it helps to do you is uh, it helps to create a miss like a pub logic app for you and that logic app will be auto generated so you can see here this logic app is uh, generated in terms of uh, json file and this json file uh, we just need to copy and uh, the app will be created for that i will show uh, going forward yeah so that's my first application and uh, second application i have created uh, let me oh sorry so this was like suppose i want to adopt so it will ask for my confirmation because whenever I am going to perform any transaction, so it is going to because MetaMask plugin is a kind of intermediary plugin which will help you put to connect with the blockchain network. So my current blockchain network is Azure Blockchain as a Service. So current gas fees because when we talk about the blockchain, so if you have heard that uh, like uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, everyone you need to buy a coins, but for this blockchain as a service, you don't need to buy any coin. Why? Because Azure Blockchain as a service is based on concept called uh, proof of uh, identity, and uh, that's called uh, consensus mechanism. And it's basically for the private blockchain network because we are uh, they are focusing more on uh, for the business network. So you know you need to know all the parties. But when you are talking about the open blockchain network, so you don't need to you know know anyone you can just go and perform the transition so for, for performing the transition you need to pay a fee in terms of gas fees so that's why you need uh you know the coins to pay the fee for that but here actually all the infrastructure is managed by microsoft azure so you don't need to pay a fee so that's why the gas fees is zero dollar so once i confirm so it will perform the transition on the, my blockchain network so if you can see uh it takes uh, maybe one or two seconds and then my once my transition is done so you can see it is success so this is adopted okay and uh, yeah so you can just go and uh, later on i will sh share all this code on my github so maybe if you want you can try there okay so same as this you can just go and adopt for that so that's that is happening actually with the help of blockchain as a service now what comes is uh, i just want to create a prototype i do i don't have uh, you know very expertise in terms of uh, coding and all so what i can do is uh, i just need to go for uh, blockchain and there are two options azure blockchain as a service and azure blockchain workbench so blockchain as a service helps you to create a blockchain network within few clicks you can just go and let me show you quickly So we can come here and we can choose a resource group what we want means like if you have any existing but we can create a new resource group. The protocol is uh, currently Quorum. So Quorum is the enterprise version of Ethereum. So Ethereum was the open blockchain network. And uh, in 2015, uh, JP Morgan and some of the organization came and they form a business network. So that's called Quorum. So it is the enterprise version of Ethereum. And uh, by default, this is the protocol. So once you create the network, so Ethereum based uh, private network will be created for this. And as I told earlier, the consortium, consortium is a kind of group. So once you are going to create this blockchain network, so you will be admin for that. And uh, in that, because you are the first one who is going to create, so you'll be the first member. But if you want later on, you can uh, add more members. So that for adding more members, you need to just add the transaction node for that because every member will hold uh, one transaction node or if no member if the member is not holding a transaction node so he even even can use uh, your network that's fine for that like in our case when we created the network for the blockchain 
so means like initially we used uh, the providers network but later on then we have set up our own network so it depends and the pricing is uh, if you are for the production workload so you need to choose the standard tier but for the test or development you can choose the basic tier for that and you can just go and create so it is very simple in terms of this you can just go and create the network after creating the network what you will get is let me show you i have already created a simple box in as a network so this is my uh, transaction node I have got, and uh, if I if I want to add more members, so I will add more transaction node for here. And uh, suppose I want to, um, it's like uh, I have a different members, like ten members, but I want to capture the data only for the one member. Like uh, suppose there is only one member who is managing all the IoT stuff, all the census data. So what I can do is uh, I can configure the blockchain data manager and I can choose the transition node which I want. And like there might be multiple transition nodes, but I can choose specifically for which transition node I want to capture the data. So this blockchain data manager will capture the data only for that particular transition node. So like I have a company A, B, and C. So I want to capture the data only for company C. So I just I can configure the transition node from here and can create a blockchain data manager. Okay, so this is how uh, box, a transition node looks like. And then uh, you need to provide this connection string. So this connection string, when you are going to configure in your MetaMask, you need to choose custom RPC and you need to provide the custom, custom uh, this connection string here. Because I have already created the network, so you, you can see it's showing that the URL is already present. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, one thing. But now my idea is I want to create a simple prototype of the blockchain. I don't want to go for the as a blockchain as a service because uh, I am I don't have any uh, development experience in case suppose. So what you can do is you can just go in a blockchain development workbench and uh, you need to provide all the details like uh, your sub resource group, your regions, uh, your authentication type, what type of authentication you want and your database password and blockchain password, what it is. Like uh, when blockchain workbench, like uh, this is this blockchain workbench, when it uh, when it is created for creating the prototype, so it stores also your uh, data in SQL Server database. That's like an off-chain storage. So, so that is a that's why we need to choose the blockchain uh, database, blockchain password, and then deployment region. Uh, in advanced settings, there are two options. If you are going to create this network, it's like you are the owner of this. So you need to choose the option for the create new. But suppose if you are going to choose the existing network, it's like suppose if you have already have a, one Ethereum network available for your organization, so what you can do is you can choose this uh, use existing and you need to provide the RPC endpoints. So what was the RPC endpoints, which I showed earlier my connection string. So you just need to provide your connection string that says uh, RPC endpoints. And because it's a closed network and uh, all the parties are known parties, so we need to configure our active directory because all the prop parties must be registered with the network either as a main user or a guest user. What it means is guest, guest user is uh, I in my slides I, I explained earlier that suppose I want to perform transactions from a village. I don't have any blockchain network and uh, I don't have anything you know to perform because I don't have any application mobile or laptop how I can perform the transaction. So what you can do is you can register that user as a guest user on your blockchain uh, active directory. So let me show you how exactly it looks like. So in your active directory users, what you can do is uh, you can register a user as a guest user and then he will be able to perform because he should be known with the, the idea is he should be also known on the consortium either as a guest user or a main user. So then he will be able to perform the transitions. He will just click the link and the transition will be performed. So it's something like that. So for once you created the blockchain workbench, so how the resources will look like, let me show you. So it will create actually a couple of resources. So that's why it is good for creating a prototype because in when we are running an application in production or uh, development if you have a development team and like, so in that scenario 
So creating a prototype is good, but uh, when we are moving for the production, because we don't need that much resources and because it will cost a lot of money. Okay. So what we can do is, uh, if you can see here, there is an app service. They have also exposed the APIs to integrate with your existing applications like uh, .NET Java or whatever. And uh, they also have uh, like event grid. So whenever we are performing any kind of transaction, so with the help of event grid, they are capturing the data and processing into SQL Server database. So this is our SQL Server database. So let me show you quickly how exactly the data looks like. If you have any questions, you can put on the chat and then I will uh, go through and answer on that. Yeah. So this is, you can see all the contract details. So even if you are not very familiar with the blockchain network and all, okay, but you can see the data, you can visualize, uh, you know, means like how the transition is by being performed on that. So let me, uh, show quickly how exactly the blockchain workbench works. So this was, uh, this is my asset transfer application. So what exactly I have done is I have developed a simple smart contract for uh, transferring means like uh, in my slides I have shown earlier, if you want to sell a property, so you have uh, like a lend, like you have buyer, you have seller, you have insurers. So all should be on the same platform. So they are going to sell the assets. So that is uh, why I have created a simple uh, asset transfer blockchain application in terms of smart contracts for uh, testing my logic. I have written the code in Solidity, which I showed earlier. So this is a Solidity code you need to write for that. Okay. And uh, because it will be their roles, permissions, and all those things will be recognized with the metadata file. So whenever we build the this uh, blockchain uh, smart contracts, it will generate an ABI file, which is your nothing but your uh, metadata file. So you need to upload that file as well uh, for, so this is your metadata file you need to upload. So like asset.json, and then it will ask your uh, smart contract. So your smart contract is uh, like a solution uh, after that. So, yeah. So, and then you can just deploy. So in this scenario, you don't need to create the whole uh, UI. You don't need to create the whole uh, infrastructure you can just go and create a blockchain workbench within about one hour and then you can start writing your uh, smart contract logic and test your smart contract logic on that so in current in my consortium there are uh, six members one is a land of authority and the second is a owner which is like a seller and there is a buyer and there is also a appraiser and uh, there is a property inspector so currently I have uh, this role in my uh, smart contracts. So land authority appraiser buyer. So I, if I want any other member to choose something like uh, means, uh, so suppose if I want to choose uh, any other party to be uh, like a uh, appraiser or inspector, I can choose and just assign a role to him because all are the known properties, uh, uh, authorities. So that's why we need to register with the ADA account for that. Okay, so now let's go and create a new asset transfer. So suppose I want to sell a, a 2 BHK uh, condo in uh, you know Singapore. So I have a uh, 650,000. So you can see here, now the contract is being created on the blockchain network. And this blockchain uh, network means like once the contract is being created, I will capture the data in uh, smart contracts. So now if you see previously, there was three records, now it's become four records. Now what I want to do is, I want to capture this data in terms of Power BI reports because this is my SQL server, right? So now this data can be used for Power BI or some other purpose. Uh, for that, so I have created a simple, uh, uh, you know, a chart for that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, means like I'm, miss going to get the data. So get, I just need to provide my SQL Server credentials, like a database. I need to use from the database, and uh, I need to provide my credentials for connecting my database. So this is my database here.
So this is my SQL Server. I need to provide my SQL Server credentials here. And uh, then my username and password. And it will be helpful to connect the data for uh, the SQL Server which we have. And uh, currently what I'm doing is uh, I am displaying the two types of the data. One is the display contracts. So what are the means so like uh, states we have? Like we have a preactive states, active states, offer place. So what it means is like preactive state is a um, few days back uh, when I was building this uh, like asset transfer. So initially there was a for a that means when seller used to post post the property into the marketplace and then asset used to be active. And then buyer can just go and buy, you know, bid for the property. So when they are going to bid for the property, then uh, the state used to change to this offer placed. And then uh, once it is going for the property verification, then pending inspection and all. Okay, but there was a question asked by the guy. He said, uh, how you know that uh, your asset is uh, legitimate? Means like, suppose I have a uh, posted your property on my name to you know on the marketplace or uh, blockchain workbench so how you will know that this property belongs to me and in that scenario what uh, means like obviously that was a means real use case uh, i mean it's like uh, miss that kind of fraud can be happen so what we did is uh, whenever you are going to uh, post the property into the blockchain network so if you see here Currently, I have posted this property. So, but now it is in pre-active assets. So, miss, it is not uh, open for the bidding for the buyers. So, suppose if I am going to log in as a buyer account, which is uh, my, uh, this is James. So, let's go and log in with the James account. So, I will not be able to bid for this property. So this is the property which I have posted this now. And so you can see in the actions, I don't have anything to you know bid for it. So what I need to do is uh, first, this property needs to be verified with the land of authority and uh, which is one of the means uh, members in the consortium. So once they verify only, then only it will be available for the bid. So let me show you how exactly it works is, uh, so land of authority is a demo two. So I will log in as a demo two account. So now you can see that uh, because I'm logging as a land of authority and now I can accept the property and can reject the property. And you see the contract activity is being created. So all the activity which you are performing on the blockchain network, it is being recorded. And it is always with the unique hash and uh, the state will change from preactive to active and uh, Okay, so the basic thing is uh, now uh, my property is uh, ready for uh, doing the bidding. So you can see that this state is changed to active. And now I can log in as a buyer account, which was my uh, demo four. And uh, property should be. Uh, available for bidding. So this is a simple, uh, you know, the prototype which I have created in like uh, two, three days. So if you want to test your uh, blockchain uh, workbench logic, how the data will be managed, how the application will look like. So it's quite easy to test uh, from now I can just go and make the offer. I can choose the inspector because uh, the, this property needs to be verified from uh, uh, the property inspector as well. So I can bid uh, for uh, that. And you can see the transition is being happening. And this contract will go to the now Elaine, which is a property inspector for being uh, inspection. And uh, the asset state will change to offer place. Now, now what I want to is, uh, I want to capture this all the data, which is, uh, you know, happened here into my Power BI report. So currently I have this, so let's go and quickly refresh it.
So you can see now I will have. A, So you can see this graph is a bit increased. So I have a, a four pre-active state previously ever had, and uh, then we had uh, why my this two deposit this four. Okay, and uh, if you can see, this is uh, also means uh, uh, increase for previously it was like Changi Yos. Then again, I have added for three BHK. So that's how it works. So it means like you want to test your end-to-end -end logic for uh, creating the simple prototype and uh, capture the data when in terms of uh, using uh, with the help of event grid and then process into SQL Server database. Then from there, we can display into the Power BI report. And uh, for, uh, it's like, this is for the prototype, but when it comes for the development part, so we have Azure Blockchain as a service, which I showed earlier for my uh, to-do list app. So what I'm going to do is uh, for to-do list app, um, this is the CRUD application, which I have created before. So in that I'm creating a list, like suppose test six and uh, create it. So I'm going to uh, capture this data uh, into the blockchain using the Azure Logic app and processing data into the first SQL Server database. So I have created a six, so let me show you. I think I have already created a SQL server for this to-do list app. So you see here, this is my sixth record, which is created here. Now let me go and create one more. Test uh, seven. So this will be for more focus on the developer. I mean, like suppose uh, being as a you want to move this application. Once you have uh, means tested your prototype, uh, verified your business logic, everything is working fine. Then you can just go and create the blockchain application like uh, your own ui for the in terms of react or uh, angular or however it's like your application looks like and uh, you can just uh, means uh, put your smart contract details here and uh, you can also means uh, in terms of because azure blockchain workbench by default it creates event grid to capture the data but in our case because we are doing the development so we need to uh, do from our end. So what we can do is uh, we can either you can create an event grid or what you can do is uh, you can use this generate data publishing for the Windows workflow and it will help you to generate this logic app. And this logic app, what exactly you need to do is uh, you just go and uh, choose this. Okay. Currently I have created seven, right? Let me show and I think seven, it was under six. Now it should be seven. So if you can see here, the seven is also come in. But uh, there is a two records is uh, going blank because uh, as of now, currently I have created two logic apps. One logic app is I think there is not passing some data. So let me uh, show you how exactly it works is. Uh, yeah, SQL Server logic app to do. Yeah, so I have uh, previously I have created a to do created, which is working correctly fine. And then I have created a SQL test also. So let me create an, another one. Uh, this integration logic app. Test three. So once the logic app is uh, created, means like there are already some predefined templates available. So you don't need to uh, go and custom create. Means like even though you can just uh, use the existing templates. So I will show how exactly it looks like. So if you can see, there is an option like uh, you can choose the blank template. 
and uh, there is also option like uh, this i am doing actually publish smart contracts to the sql server database so there is already predefined template available for that you don't need to uh, go and create manually like how i am doing but it's good to have uh, you can also like if you want to do for the event grid you want to capture all the data like ioc iot sensors data so you want to capture whenever a smart contract is happening so you want to capture all the data with a huge amount of data so you can configure with the event grid and uh, you can push the data in terms of power bi report whenever the smart contract is happening you want to send the email notification so if your action is being performed by you know whenever you post the property into the blockchain network and you want to send an email notification to all the parties or uh, that property is listed on the blockchain network so that kind of uh, good features you can do that's a really good integration capabilities but which microsoft as you're providing so in uh, but like how i have uh, generated the logic app here so suppose i want to means like i don't want to go for the template i just want to create a means like with this connection string so what i can do is i can just go and uh, choose the blank app i can go and replace this uh, connection string so in the designer if you will see is uh, this my smart contract is created my connection is so you, you just need to create a, you know the connection string i have already connection strings so i can just choose otherwise i can you can uh, choose a new one so you need to provide the connection name a sif and uh, then uh, it's like endpoints ethereum endpoints which i showed for the metamask plugin like uh, the endpoints which i are providing so let me again show you for that so this is my azure blockchain uh, so this is my uh, transition node so in the transition node connection string I need to provide uh, this Ethereum endpoints. So this is my Ethereum endpoints. I need to provide in the logic logic of creating the connection. It will recognize. And this is my account address is asking. So this my account address is nothing but uh, uh, my uh, transaction node account member account address. So this is my account address member account address. I need to provide and uh, i can provide the password so already i have created so i don't need to create any other one so i can just go and create a new connection string for that okay so once my connection string is so it will capture all my smart contract functions here so i have two functions like task created and task completed so which actions i want to capture i can just uh, choose from here and then uh, we have a uh, miss like sql server so I already created the connection for the SQL Server. So you can just go and create the SQL Server connection here. And whenever is uh, any action is being performed, so the logic app will trigger. So let me show how exactly it works is. So this is my to-do list. So this was uh, for uh, created earlier. So logic app designer. Okay, and now I what I will do is uh, test uh, it created. Okay, so I will just uh, put it and make it run. Okay, let me perform the transaction, and I have performed the transaction, so it should reach to this. Uh, so my transaction is being confirmed and if you can see here uh, it is reached to the block like a logic app to process the data into the sql server database same as you can create uh, you know some other one is uh, like you can just go and uh, create a new step for triggering your email so whenever is any action is being performed on the blockchain network you want to process the data into sql server database and also you want to send the email notification to all the parties so that's how it uh, you know simple it is so yeah that's what let's let me jump to the slides again so what we did is uh, means like we have demoed the two things one is uh, with azure blockchain as a service which is we means like try to create a blockchain smart contract then deploy the smart contracts on the ab uh, as a blockchain as a service which is uh, my uh, you can just deploy the smart contracts here and then 
means like you can create the logic app so you can just directly right click and generate a data publishing app so you want to capture the data of your uh, actions performed so you can generate the app and then you can deploy the logic apps on the blockchain as a blockchain so how it looks like is uh means when you are going for creating the apis so api will api call will be like uh, you will receive the http request you will call the smart contracts and then you will perform the transaction on that so yeah in summary we discuss about the blockchain then how it solved the problem then we gone through about uh, the blockchain as a service then we have seen how we can set up the azure workbench and uh, display the data in power bi report and then we have seen also how we can capture the data using azure logic apps uh, on the blockchain yeah so these are the some free resources available for uh, so you can just go and take a look and uh, yeah thank you so if you have any questions uh, you may may ask them thank you walker uh, asif bhai thank you for your nice presentation uh, i think uh, it's a clear presentation and we have understood uh, yeah i think you are very much <laughs> you need to take rest <laughs> actually Oh, uh, we are very much grateful that you are uh, taking frequently uh, uh, sessions in our uh, community and we are uh, very much grateful <laughs> to you uh, so that uh, we uh, we have get got many uh, more depth idea on the blockchain and i hope uh, audience will be uh, very much uh, rich in uh, context of uh blockchain azure blockchain service and hopefully in the next time we will do some more session with you and so that our community and the community behind us will be uh benefited from your session thank you so much by uh, really nice uh, nice like to see you all and uh, thanks for providing me the opportunity and uh, yeah uh, it's a really long day thanks uh, thanks all Thank you, Asif. Bye. Very much. Yeah, it's a good session. Okay. Okay. Love us. Thank you. Love us. Love us. Hello, everyone. Uh, hope you are uh, enjoying the sessions. And now we are going to introduce with Priyo. Uh, he is from Singapore, and we uh, hope that uh, it will be a nice presentation of you. And it will be uh, a effective session. Uh, uh, we are just uh, moving towards Pio, and uh, Pio will uh, or today Pio session is intelligent query processing, and it will be grateful for us to uh, get. Um, internal of uh, I'm just I'm just going to share your session.
thank you everyone we are now going towards prio he will present on intelligent query processing uh,
muted. Unmuted.
Thank you very much, uh, Priyo, for your nice presentation. And due to some uh, technical cons uh, problem, uh, we'll not. Uh, we are going to uh, end the session, and hope it will be a good session for uh, the audience. And we hopefully in the next year we are uh, arranging more sessions, and more uh, speaker will join in our session, and as well as we are inviting local speaker local speakers to onboard uh, in our second saturday session it will be great for us to uh, uh, share knowledge and we are uh, very much happy that you have uh, spent lots of time and uh, hope it will be enjoyed thank you very much goodbye <laughs>